Well, this is certainly unexpected. I saw they were toying with buffs on the PBE, but I never actually thought they'd do it. So yeah, let's go check this out. Let's see what's going on. Uh, Q bonus damage increased, but no longer benefits from critical strike. R now extends the duration of the target when Vayne has... Oh, when a target Vayne has damaged in the last three seconds dies. Uh, let's see... She's in a pretty decent place for most players, clearly to find weaknesses, her weak lane phase, but if she makes it out unscathed, her high damage output and slippery nature can take over games. The highest level of play, she is more consistently punished for her weakness and never really gets to shine. I think this is, before I even continue to read or comment on the balance, I think this is just such an important thing to understand. In high elo, she is so garbage. And... When they say most players, they mean, like, silver and bronze and gold. So, yeah, if you are someone who doesn't know how to punish an incredibly weak laner like Vayne, then, yeah, like, she's just gonna roll over you. That's just kind of how it works. But against people who actually know, like, to at least, like, a very basic level how to play bot lane like people in Diamond do, then you're just gonna get whipped. I'm not even talking about, like, high elo, like, master challenger, like... In, like, Diamond High Platinum, like, people have good enough game knowledge and game mechanics to destroy Vayne in her current state. So, it's not like she's unplayable or anything like that. It's just she's too inconsistent to pick into, like, a normal lane. So, like, for instance, Vayne against Ezreal. Vayne against Sivir. Vayne against, uh, in some cases, if she has a weak support, Tristana, you can kind of get away with it. But... Overall, for the most part, you just cannot pick her. And so these buffs are attempting to address that. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah, they're trying to address the fact that, like, for the top, I would say, 3-2% of players, she's not, like, a very viable pick, even if you're very good at her. It's like, you can get away with it. The best way I can put it is this. Um, for a lot of players, there's no reason to select her over other characters, right? She doesn't actually bring anything to the table that other people don't. Um, you know, she has less damage output output and less safety than a Kog'Ma. Um, she's got a weaker early game than a Tristana, while an equally good late game. She can't do any of the big planks or plays that Twitch can. Right now, there's just no reason to choose her. So they're trying to, I think, make it to where she is a more interesting choice to pick. Uh, and she can fit a new spot in the meta. Okay. Anyway, back to this. <sighs> Let's see. We think intense high moments and notable low moments is also part of Vayne's outplay fantasy, however, so we want to make sure we preserve that feeling. Um, yeah, I can get behind that, sure. Even as we're making her laning phase more survivable. As a result, let's break this change list down into two separate points. Primarily, we're shifting some of Vayne's power back into her laning phase at the expense of her of some of her late-game crit scaling, okay? To make sure her potential for high moments is still there, we're adding a new mechanic to Final Hour to let her snowball team fights when she starts off on the right foot. Hmm. Okay, bonus damage is no longer increased when attacks critically strike. That's interesting. So you can still get a normal crit off, you just can't get a tumble crit off, is the thing. Uh, let's see. So basically what they did was, if you guys were around for this or remember it, um, it used to be to where they made it to where her bonus damage could crit, and then they also increased her attack damage to these numbers in terms of her scaling on her Q. So they kind of, like, took a halfway point. What, what they did before was that, this is basically the opposite of what it is right now. It used to be that they took it to 50% max, but you could crit on the bonus damage, and now they change it to where you get the 70% bonus attack damage, but you can't crit. That would be kind of interesting to do some math to see. I mean, I'm sure being able to crit is much more important late game in terms of damage output, but, like, earlier on when you only have, like, a BF sword and something like that, the extra 20% attack damage would probably help a lot. Oh, and you know what I just realized? That's very interesting. The scaling on Q actually sucks now. It's only 5% per rank. So whereas you would have to put 5 points into Q to get that kind of uh, damage, you can actually just put 1 in and still get a rank 5 Q. 
minus the crit chance. Hmm. Yeah. Which means I sincerely believe that Yax yeah, a nerf W, okay, um a W max is definitely best now. Yeah. Cause like let me put it to you this way. I I'm not sure. I haven't play tested this at all, nor have I really thought about these changes, because I to be entirely honest with you, I saw them on the PBE, but I had zero faith they would actually go through. I'm I'm really surprised to see them live. But in terms of like theory crafting, right? Like if you do get a silver bolts max off um in lane, it's more consistent against tanky supports, yeah, but like, to get the old damage, you have to put at least two points into it in order to get, like... It's just more value as before, right? So you would have to put, like, this Q at rank 1, right? You put one point in your tumble is the same as a rank 5 tumble minus the crit thing, right? So that's a that's really great value right there in terms of what it was before. And for this one, the minute you put two points into W, so, like, at level 5 you are basically, because you don't have any crit chance at level 5, right? If you W max in lane, you will be stronger than you were before with a W max. Uh, the only difference is that you won't get as much cooldown on Q. So you'll have to um, play your trades more carefully. You also probably don't want to use a tumble reset on creeps anymore. Let's see, and if a champion dies within three seconds, you get the reset, which is, uh, that doesn't change the way you, I mean, I guess it kind of changes the way you play, it means you can be more aggressive in team fights because your stealth can last for longer, but, um, really what this means is, in all reality, is that you can dump this, your final hour on a tank. Uh, the main problem with it before was that when you would final hour, and then, like, for the extra bonus damage and, like, the survivability against, like, a diver bruiser kind of thing, you were left in this awkward position to where you couldn't, like, help your divers finish off the back line at all unless you had a rapid fire cannon which is your third item so that's not going to typically happen because you need yourself to be able to get close to like a syndra or the enemy adc or something otherwise you're just going to get blown up but you also like in a team fight it's like the right choice to use your ultimate early on like typically because you even want to use it to like dive like or, like, more often than not, you're being jumped on by a Jax, or, you know, their tank is getting on you, or something. They're trying to engage on you since you're the main damage output, right? So you have to use your ultimate to survive. But that means you don't have the stealth, you don't have the bonus damage for any of the backline carries. So, like, I don't know, half the time when I use this ultimate in a team fight, I feel like fights just end in a draw. I killed their tanks, they killed my tanks, and I'm just gonna leave because I can't fight them. And... They're not going to try to chase me because I can turn on them or something. So this could actually, like, basically if a frontline trade goes even, then you can actually win team fights now. Hmm. That's, these are interesting changes. I, I like them. I'm a fan. Uh, this is cool. I like this ultimate thing a lot now. That's really cool. I'm going to be really interested to see how this feels after a while. The important thing is that all they did was they um they shaved off like the early strength of silver bolts and they made it scale a little worse. But you still get your 12% at rank 5. The minimum damage is down by 10, but I really that just makes it like oh, but it's up early. That's I don't get this. Why? Why why did that happen? Well, the flat level 1 minimum damage is pretty... It's better. It's actually better at every rank ex up until rank 3, and then it... Like, see, why did it go from 100 to 95? Why was that... That's weird. Whatever. And it goes to 110. So it's better at rank 1, but then in rank 2, which is when the max health was worse. I don't know. I'm, let me do a calculation real quick. I actually, I think I might be onto something here. So let's say you have like 650 health or whatever times uh, 0.06. Okay, so that's 39. See, that's what I thought. So what's the break point? So 800 times 0.06 is 48. Uh, so that's 1,000 is obviously 60. Okay, so that's actually fascinating. You're actually going to get a lot more damage out of the minimum damage 
if you rank it up as well, because as you just saw from my calculations there, nobody is going, you're not going to actually like, okay, so this is actually very fascinating. So because they buff the minimum damage early on, and since nobody is like, okay, the way the system works is this for W, if you don't know. So there are two options here. I just pointed at the screen. There are two options here. It's binary. Whichever one does the most damage, it chooses. So if 6% of someone's max health is higher, it does that. But if, you know, it's not obviously minimum, minimum damage, it's going to do this much damage as well. So you're actually going to be doing a lot more damage. Uh, what was it? Yeah, it ranks 1 and 2 with your silver bolts if you because of the minimum damage buff. And like losing max damage up here at a higher rank is completely irrelevant. Because, like, let me look at something real quick. So, let's see, calculator. Sorry, I'm opening this up again. How much health would someone have to have for the minimum damage to actually matter? It's only a five-point damage difference, so I guess I'll use the max one. So, like, if someone just has a 1,000 health, let's say, that means you're level 9. So, this is, like, an incredibly squishy person. Times uh, 0.12. Yeah, so the target would have to have less than a 1,000 health when you're level 9 which is, like, completely unheard of. Like, I mean, like, what's, like, 900? Okay, yeah, so the person would have to have about, like, 900 health in order for the minimum damage nerf to mean anything. Like, 950 health. But it's actually, it's pretty substantial early on, actually, these two right here. That's really interesting. Yeah, so, haven't played a game of it yet. But what I do think, what I do think is that best bet is to put one point in Q at level one, and then put three points in W to get up to your eight percent mark, and then go to a Q max for the cooldown. Yeah, I do believe that is best. And in team fights, uh, if you know you're gonna get a reset, you can dump your ult really early on. And you can ride off of that. Okay, yeah. So those are my initial impressions of the buffs. I do believe that this is a pretty interesting change. Um, in summary, I'm going to put a little timestamp for this. So in summary, I think these changes are good. I think they're healthy. Um, I'm fine with them removing the crit. That is totally okay. Um, put one point in Q at level 1 because it's the same as the level 5 scaling. Uh, and the only reason why you max Q is for the cooldown. Then put three points into your W, levels 1 through 5, because they buff the minimum damage. It's the same at level 3, but levels 1 and 2, it's a lot better, so you want to increase this a little bit. Because you don't actually get any main benefit off of maxing this in terms of, like, lane trading, because the cooldown doesn't matter that early on, or typically doesn't matter. Like, the only reason why it would matter is if you get a second Q in during a trade, and it, you're, it's never going to be that low of a cooldown for that to happen. So just putting one point in it, and then... Putting three points into your W is much better. Um, after that, max Q. So at, once you hit level six, get your ultimate, and then after that, put four points in Q for the increased cooldown. And uh, in terms of your R reset, just be aware that it's a thing. Um, it's not like you have to recast it or anything. It just, like, the duration of it resets. So you can use it more aggressively on frontline. Uh, yeah, so I'll be doing some games. Um, I'll be testing it out, trying out. Pretty sure crit build is still best, but, I mean, I'll try work. We'll see how it is. Other stuff like that. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll have more content up soon. Uh, take it easy.